Mobile phones have so much potential to enhance our lives. They allow us to connect with others, store memories, and just stay organized overall. Unfortunately, the average person in the US spends four and a half hours on their phone per day. And this number only gets worse if you're a millennial or Gen Z. Now, if you're cool with those numbers, this video probably isn't for you. But if there's even a part of you that wants to start changing the way you use your phone, do stick around. By following these three steps, I've managed to change my toxic relationship with my phone and now use it as an important tool that helps organize my days. All right, so do you actually know where you're spending time on your phone? Because if you don't, you need to. For our first step, we're gonna be going into our phone settings and opening up the screen time section. Tapping into your daily average will open up a list of apps and show you how much time you're actually spending on each individual app. The goal here is to reduce the overall amount of time spent using unhelpful applications. And I'm not here to tell you how you should or shouldn't be spending time, but just be honest with yourself. Create yourself a list of unhelpful apps that you seem to use a lot and pick out a few that you want to work on. So we have two general strategies for helping to reduce that screen time. Utilizing app tracking softwares already inbuilt in your phone to help reduce that screen time, or you can just delete some of your selected apps completely. Now, deleting some of those applications isn't as wild as it sounds, and depending on your goals, this might be the better option for you. Deleting an app is not the same as not using a service completely. For example, you can delete your Instagram app, but still use the web browser version of Instagram. What we're trying to tackle here is the addictiveness of the apps themselves, which have often been refined and optimized to hold our attention for as long as possible. The web browser versions are often a lot more clunky and just a lot less addictive. If you're forcing yourself to use these web browser versions, you might find that your overall time spent on social media just reduces because these web browser versions are more clunky and they're just not as nice to use. For whatever reason though, deleting your apps might not work for you, which is also cool. There are a bunch of other strategies we can use instead. The first thing I'd recommend is putting the screen time widget on your phone. A lot of us don't even realize how much time we're actually spending on our phone and just seeing the number objectively on our screen can help us reduce that screen time without us even trying. If you do need a bit more of an intervention though, our phones have inbuilt screen time limiters. You've already created a list of unhelpful applications. These screen time limiters allow you to set daily caps on the amount of time you spend on these individual applications. And if you want, you can set daily caps on entire categories of applications. For example, setting a daily cap on all games on your phone. The final option here is to download a third party program to help you reduce your screen time. Now there are a bunch of them, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but I have tried a few. One sec is a pretty good one, which makes you take a breath before allowing an application to open. It forces you to think about what emotion is causing you to use this application. Opal is another good one, which features a bunch of nice looking reports and graphs, which allows you to track your progress. Honestly though, all of these applications are paid and I just think our phone's inbuilt screen limiters are good enough. I know the idea of not being able to use certain apps whenever you want sounds daunting, but that's why it's so important to manage this in a way that works for you. Don't just tell yourself you're never gonna use TikTok or Instagram or whatever, because you're just setting yourself up for failure. Find an amount of time that realistically you're willing to spend on each platform and move from there. All right, so do you know that saying a clear bedroom means a clear mind? I reckon it's similar for our phones and considering we use our phones on a daily basis, we definitely don't clean them enough. It's a quick exercise. Just scroll through your pages. Do you recognize any apps that you basically never use that you downloaded one time for a very specific purpose but haven't touched them since? Just delete them. If you need them, you can always re-download them again. And if you want to take this one step further, use folders for your apps. It helps to reduce the number of pages you have to scroll through when you're looking for something. and just helps to keep everything organized. For example, I know that if I need to do anything to do with my finances, I can just click into this folder here and all of my finance related applications are gonna be in here. Cool, so now we've decluttered our phone and dealt with some of the apps that just take up a little bit too much time. Now we wanna set our phone up in a way that adds to our lives rather than takes away. Now again, this bit's gonna be personal to you. Maybe you're someone who prefers an aesthetic setup or someone who's super minimal. 
Either way, here are some ideas for a setup based on what I found works for me, and you can just take whatever works for you. First thing, unlock your phone and swipe right. If you haven't customized this page, I definitely recommend doing so. I reckon the calendar widget works really well here and can be customized to display different levels of detail. If you have a Mac, this works even better. You can organize your days and weeks over on the calendar app on your Mac and have it automatically sync onto your phone. Seeing your weeks and days laid out in this way ensures that you're using your time effectively. And it's just kind of satisfying to see everything laid out so nicely. Even if you're not a calendar person, I definitely recommend this one. I'd say the calendar widget is the most important widget on this page, but I do rate the screen time widget as well. Basically, what you wanna do is turn this page from something like this into something like this. Spend some time looking at some widgets and just customize your page in a way that works for you. Swiping back into our home page, we wanna make sure this screen has all our essentials without being too overwhelming. If you can, try and keep this page to three or four essential apps that you use on a daily basis. For anyone who needs to stay on top of their emails, I'd also recommend the email widget. It's a really useful application which has helped keep my inbox at zero for a while now. The last page is reserved for all the apps that you don't or shouldn't be using on a daily basis. If you can, organize these into folders. This will also help with the temptation of clicking on those bright app icons. At this point, you could download a bunch of productivity and utility apps for your phone. I'm not gonna go through any in this video because although I've used some in the past, I personally prefer to just rely on my phone for as little as possible. If you follow these steps, how you use your phone should begin to change over time. But if you're looking to make a more impactful and immediate change, I thoroughly recommend trying a digital detox. I recently did one over a 30 day period and I can't stress the benefits enough. Not only did it completely change my relationship with my phone, but it also provided a bunch of other unexpected benefits, which have also been great. If you're interested in learning more, you can click this video here. Otherwise, that's it from me. Big love and I'll catch you in the next one.